What's up y'all, it's Titar, and it's time to talk about Unova remakes. They might not be coming. Not the way we think, maybe not even at all. So it starts like this. Man, we've been waiting forever to talk about Unova. So in Scarlet and Violet, first they take you to Kitakami, then they take you to Blueberry Academy in Unova. And whoever worked on Blueberry Academy at Game Freak, they must have been crazy fans of Unova because they put a lot of Unova references in it. The battle music, the wild battles, how if you read the descriptions of the Elite Four, they say they come from actual cities in Unova. The entire atmosphere changes in Blueberry Academy and it's almost too much Unova. So much that it starts to get freaky. I actually saw a tweet from Bulbapedia that captures what I'm trying to say well. Not that I'm on Twitter much, I just happen to see this. Here we go. They call the Indigo Disc a giant love letter to Unova. With the Indigo Disc being one giant love letter to Unova from characters and their teams, to music, locations, we really wouldn't be surprised if we don't see an actual black and white remake at this point. And that's not necessarily a bad thing, because black and white in its sequels remain absolutely gorgeous DS games with a fantastic style that don't need upgrading. A simple re-release would be great. So he captured what I'm trying to say perfectly, so I had to put that in here. The idea is that when you put that much work into Blueberry Academy, where it's that big a reference to Unova, it's almost like they're compensating. In fact, I even found the Charged Stone Cave in the Terrarium. It's a whole remake of the Charged Stone Cave. The same electric pattern, crystals, you got electrowebs on the walls. We got to experience the Unova vibe again, so it's almost like Blueberry Academy was a substitute. And we're going to be going to something else after these games that's not Unova, which is why they did it. And... In terms of how they worded it, the re-release, it's not a far-fetched notion, the idea that they could just release Black and White and its sequels through, like, Switch Online or something. So it's the exact same DS graphics, while Game Freak moves on to something else that they really want to be working on. So there's that, and that's one way to look at this whole Blueberry Academy situation. But I was doing some thinking, and there's a second way to look at what they did with Blueberry Academy, which is that they're trying to lead into Unova. So it's the complete other approach. And I think y'all will be excited to hear the idea I'm putting out here. It's like this. So here's the thing about the Unova games, remaking them. Game Freak has shown their uninterest in remaking games, as we saw with BDSP, right? Way at the start of when they're developing Sinnoh remakes, they probably had the idea of putting Origin Diagonal into just a bigger Sinnoh remake, but then they realized they just want to have more fun with the lore, so they gave the remake job to ILCA. And I think something similar will happen this time as well, where Game Freak will give Black and White Slash 2 to ILCA while they work on something much different. Even if we were to get true Black and White remakes in Polydian graphics, like in Gen 9 graphics, they take place, I think, a pretty good while ago. The Pokemon timeline is not very known, but it would seem like if we were to get Black and White remakes in the style of Gen 9, that they would take place in the past. You see the way they led into Unova with Blueberry Academy? They introduced this academy where strong trainers from Unova, which is right beside, go to undergo their education and learn how to train their battle. So imagine Blueberry Academy is actually meant to lead into what modern Unova is. And so what I'm saying is, instead of Game Freak right now being working on Legends, Kirm, Victini, Unova, what they're working on is a modern Unova game that takes place after the events of Paldia, but not in a Legends format, a conventional Pokemon game in Unova. So essentially, Black 3 and White 3, but it's not going to be called those. So let me explain it. Essentially, it would be in the Gen 9 graphics that you got to experience Paldia, you'd be going through all of Unova again, but it would be a new story. And this would carry on what was being built up in Blueberry Academy with the Terrasto Phenomenon. Briar studying it, says she wants to stabilize it in other regions. One of them, you would imagine, maybe is Unova, or she brings the Terrasto Phenomenon to Unova. And so this game actually takes place pretty much right after Paldia. This would be a whole new story, a whole new protagonist, maybe not even involving Team Plasma. 
But the ultimate plot of the story would be us going through getting the gym badges and ultimately meeting the original dragon at the end. Yeah, tell me that would not be so cool. And the thing is, an idea like this is usually far-fetched, but the thing with Game Freak is they like to stretch their legs for some reason. They brought Mega Evolution into Aura's remakes. They completely split their hype season for Gen 4 remakes. It's not far-fetched to think not only would they split it again for Gen 5 remakes, but again, stretching their legs, instead of doing a Legends game, they take another approach and just make it so IOC is making black and white, and slash black to white too, that's hard to tell, and they're effectively working on black three and white three, but it's not gonna be called those. Do you know what it will be called? It will be called names that make it seem like its own Pokemon game, because essentially that's what it is. It would be its own Pokemon game, except we're just in a region we've been to before, but it would be a whole new story. So these titles could be something like, and it would be two titles, not one. It'd be something like Pokemon Truths and Pokemon Ideals. You might actually see that on the on the shelves. Or Pokemon Yin and Pokemon Yang. Could you imagine that? Pokemon Yin and Yang on the shelves, 2024 or 2025, give them some time. That could really be what's happening. And there's a lot of interesting things to go along with this idea. In Blueberry Academy, when you're dealing with the Elite Four, not only do they tell us that all of them come from actual places in Unova, like Drayden's from Opelucid, Amaris is from Castilia, I think Crispin is from Verbank, but they also hint some more about them. Like for example, they say Lacey, is the daughter of a gym leader. And this is kind of crazy. When you start inviting guests over to your clubhouse in Blueberry Academy, you can unlock secret dialogue where Hassel of the Elite Four tells you Drayden is Drayden's grandson. So think about what Game Freak could be building here for us to return to Unova, right? And this would be after the events of Paldia. Maybe these same cast members we met on Blueberry Academy are in the main Unova games. Maybe they've taken over some of the gyms. But essentially, the cool idea here is that it's like we're going to a Gen 10 region, right? Because it would be a brand new Pokemon game, except it's just in one we've seen before. Now, I just try to think in Game Freak's shoes, the way they like to stretch their legs, this sounds like a crazy idea they would do. So this means everything you see in Unova would be remade in Gen 9 style graphics with probably changes, right, that have happened over the years. And that means, darn, Briar could even pop up in the games and be telling you about the Trastle phenomenon, be referencing, not directly, but the characters from the main games. So I'm gonna give you a couple other tidbits about the Blueberry Elite for right? Lacey, her father, it should have been obvious because she has Excadrill and she got the hair pins that match this dude's uh, hat. That's her daddy. Yeah, she a second year student at Blueberry Academy. If you just make like two years pass between Polly and Pokemon Yin and Yang, you could go to Driftvale City, hear a remix version of that theme, new buildings up around. And when you make it to the end of the challenge, the gym challenge, she's at the end of it, Lacey. And then imagine this, right? This is in Unova, right? Kieran and Carmine are from Kitakami, but they go to Blueberry Academy, which is in Unova. So it's not far-fetched if we even maybe even see those characters pop up again, not for a big purpose, but you would just see them again. And especially, I like to explore this Briar idea because Briar and Carmine were said to have gone over to so many regions. So it'd be kind of cool if your professor for these games, though I don't really think they should be mixing characters that deeply, but imagine if your professor for this game, because the real one's just busy doing stuff, is Briar. She gives you your Pokemon and her little assistant is Carmine. And she they kind of played the role of starting your adventure off and you'd run into them. But they wouldn't have a main purpose in the plot, but I know Game Freak likes to try different ideas, so that's something they could do too. Now, Amaris and Crispin, they didn't reveal who their parents are, which is good. It's, it'd be kind of weird if everyone's just related to gym leaders, but you can really paint a cool picture in your head of how these Unova games could turn out. I would imagine you wouldn't even find Drayden at the Opelousid gym. You would find him as like the fourth Elite Four member or something. He's just like this careless trainer who's naturally strong. Doesn't seem like he would even care to be champion. It would sound like a good place for him to just be the fourth. But yeah, this essentially means pretty much all the gym leaders would be different. All the Elite Four would be different. Even the champion would be different. I don't. Maybe all the passed away at this point. <laughs> don't say that. You do have a grandson. Maybe you run into his grandson and he has a more prominent role. But the idea I want to put forward is that this wouldn't really be related to the story of Black and White and Black and White 2. They would be their own games. The idea I'm trying to paint here is Pokemon Yin and Yang 
completely being their own games. The only carrying on factory being Unova and the original Dragon. Maybe you could, if we want to go there, add some connections like say the evil person in yin and yang would be like Getsus's true son and you're supposed to look at his characters like a mirror to n his adopted son and he's the one who ends up fulfilling the original dragon crap but i think it could really show what game freak's capable of because i know they're capable of a lot as of scarlet and violet if they made it a brand new story last few things to mention i guess n and the original protagonist could be somewhere in the games i would say they shouldn't and that Zekka and Reshram should be back in the wild just because Game Freak built up this thing where we don't even know which game actually happened. So I suppose if you made it two versions, Yin and Yang, then you could kind of keep splitting the universes. But yeah, essentially, the Terrastal gimmick would carry over to these games, which could also give them more room to expand on uh, Terrastal states like Terrapagus and Ogrepan get, maybe more Pokemon get in this region. Now you get to explore and reminisce through Unova, but this time with the Terrastal phenomenon, and the last thing this does is Paldia built up such a mystery with what Terrastalizing is, Terrapagus, the Paradox Pokemon, and Terrapagus' powers to this day that you never know if by doing this, they continue the story of what all this is, of what Terrastalizing is, Paradox Pokemon are, and they can still give us more lore. And you never know, by pure coincidence, maybe the original dragon in some way was linked to the Terrastal phenomenon in ancient days, and that's by coincidence a focus that would be in this game so yeah let me know some name ideas for these games in the comments and if y'all think it's a cool idea too but yeah that's what i wanted to share i'll see you on the next one take care